TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Dominican Republic issued a statement in which it said that it is examining the possibility of relocating its embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Jerusalem has conveyed its sympathies to both Greece and Turkey respectively after both nations were impacted by a number of earthquakes in the Aegean Sea that consequently claimed the lives of dozens of people and caused severe damage in its aftermath. Another attack was reported in France over the weekend despite extensive efforts by Paris to protect its churches and schools throughout the country. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Dominican Republic issued a statement in which it reported that it is examining the possibility of relocating its embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The statement was published following a phone conversation between Dominican Foreign Minister Roberto Alvarez and his Israeli counterpart Gabi Ashkenazi. The Dominican Foreign Ministry highlighted further in its statement that the possibility is studied by weighing various factors including the fact that until 1980 the Dominican Embassy had its headquarters in Jerusalem as well as the reality that the seat of political power including the office of the Prime Minister, President and Parliament or Knesset in Hebrew is located in Israel's capital Jerusalem. The Dominican Republic's embassy in Israel did not provide TV7 with any additional information on the possible timetable for the probable relocation. If and when a relocation would be adopted by Santo Domingo authorities, the Caribbean nation would join the United States and Guatemala, which currently maintain their embassies in Jerusalem, as well as Honduras, which is expected to follow suit in January of 2021. In other yet related news, the United States issued for the first time a passport to a Jerusalem-born American with Israel listed as the birthplace instead of the city. After decades of hollow promises, Washington's proactive policy change is a direct result of a decision by U.S. President Donald Trump on December 6, 2017 to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Menachem and his parents are with us today. He's 18 years old. He's waited a long time for this moment to come. Today, we say to Menachem Zivotovsky, you have a nation of birth, the state of Israel. It is my honor, it is my honor to present you with the very first passport issued to an American citizen born in Jerusalem with Israel designated as the place of birth. This is yours. I'm humbled and honored to receive this passport as a representative of the many American citizens born in Jerusalem who can now have their official government documents express the fact, uh, release, reflect the fact that they were born in Israel. The American decision naturally infuriated the Palestinian leaderships both in Ramallah and Gaza. In a condemning response, the Islamist Hamas, whose charter refers to Israel as an occupying force that must be annihilated, referred to the latest U.S. decision as an aggression against Palestinian rights. <laughs> هو يعكس الاستهتار البالغ والكبير من الإدارة الأمريكية لكل المنظومة العربية التي ما زالت تعلن أن القدس عاصمة لفلسطين. It is important to know that the Islamist Hamas organization, which is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, openly calls in its founding charter, per Article 13, for an armed jihad, an Islamic term for a holy war, as the only answer for eradicating the Jewish state from what the Islamist group perceives, per Article 15, as occupied Muslim lands. Now to another matter, Jerusalem has conveyed its sympathies to both Turkey and Greece respectively after both nations were impacted by a number of earthquakes in the Aegean Sea that consequently claimed dozens of lives and caused severe damage in its aftermath. 
While the Israeli Foreign Ministry informed TV7 that both Ankara and Athens received separate offers of emergency aid, Greek authorities said they were not in need of immediate assistance, while Turkey, whose relations with Israel had deteriorated sharply in recent years, apparently rejected Jerusalem's offer. Meanwhile, Turkey's Disasters and Emergency Agency, Afad, confirmed that at least 79 people lost their lives and more than 940 people sustained injuries. Speaking from the stricken city of Izmir, Afad chief Mehmed Gulugulu noted that extensive efforts are being conducted to accommodate people who lost their homes and search and rescue activities are still ongoing. Currently in six different sites, we are running our search and rescue activities in eight uh, blocks, eight buildings. Uh, until now, we uh, saved, we rescued more than 100 people from the buildings alive. And while Turkey is devastated by yet another natural disaster, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan made a televised address in which he called for the world to fight what he referred to as anti-Muslim sentiments in the same matter that the international community combats anti-Semitism. İnsan hakları ve demokrasi konusunda dünyaya ders veren ülkelerin bugün İslam düşmanlığı ve yabancı karşıtlığında başı çektiğini görüyoruz. Irkçı terörizm birçok Batı ülkesinde veba gibi yayılmakta, kimi zaman devlet başkanı seviyesinde himaye görmektedir. Müslümanlara ait ibadethanelere, iş yerlerine, mescitlere, sivil toplum kuruluşlarının binalarına yönelik saldırılar vahim boyutlara ulaşmıştır. Avrupalı Müslümanlar sistematik olarak ayrımcılığa uğramakta, hak ve özgürlükleri ellerinden alınmaktadır. İnsanlığın geleceğini, farklı inanç ve kültürlerin bir arada yaşama kültürünü tehdit eden Bu yanlış gidişata artık bir dur denilmesi gerekiyor. Holocaust felaketi sonrasında nasıl antisemitizm ile mücadele edilmişse, bugün de İslam düşmanlığıyla aynı şekilde mücadele edilmelidir. It is important to know that despite repeated rhetoric voiced by the Turkish head of state, Ankara relayed his condolences to Paris over the brutal murder of three French Christians by an Islamist attacker. Nevertheless, in an exclusive interview with the Qatari-owned Al Jazeera network, French President Emmanuel Macron voiced his anger over the wave of misinformation that plagues Islamic television networks and social media over the latest developments in France and Europe in general. Et donc la France aujourd'hui est sous le choc de ces attentats, à la fois dans une, un sentiment de, de tristesse, d'unité aussi et de colère. Et pour la première fois, alors même que nous vivions ces attentats, il y a eu des réactions très, très fortes, dans, je dirais à l'international, pour attaquer la France, sur la base de beaucoup de malentendus. Et c'est pour ça que je voulais les lever, y compris avec vous, parce que j'ai suivi ce qu'il y avait parfois dans vos réseaux sociaux, sur votre antenne. President Macron further accused his Turkish counterpart for blatantly lying for geopolitical reasons. Mais je pense que tous les dirigeants politiques et religieux qui ne condamnent pas avec la plus grande clarté toute forme de violence à l'égard de la France qui est un pays de liberté et de lumière prennent une responsabilité parfois directe en tout cas indirecte certaine sur les violences qui seraient commises à l'égard des Français en France ou à l'étranger. Maintenant Quel est notre souhait Que les choses s'apaisent Que la Turquie respecte, que le président turc respecte la France, respecte l'Union européenne, respecte ses valeurs, ne dise pas de mensonges et ne profère pas d'insultes. Ce serait formidable. Et je pense que c'est le minimum minimorum. Et ensuite, que le président turc, à la hauteur de l'histoire de son pays, cesse les actes unilatéraux qu'il a conduits contre plusieurs Européens. Voilà ce que je dis. In light of the growing threat to public security, the French military deployed thousands of additional troops throughout the country to secure sensitive sites, including churches and non-Muslim schools. Our state of mind is that we are preoccupied by the situation of security, which is very tense compared to the context that we have been able to know in the case of Operation Sentinel. And at the same time, we are 
nous sommes contents d'être déployés dans le cadre de la lutte contre le terrorisme et contre le fanatisme, qui représente la plus haute valeur de notre engagement. It is important to know that despite the highest state of alert throughout France, another attack was reported in the city of Lyon on Saturday when an unknown assailant opened fire toward a Greek Orthodox church in the city, wounding at least one of its priests. Nevertheless, in light of the fact that the attacker fled the scene and the priest was unable to recognize the assailant, authorities insisted that no line of inquiry was officially adopted. À ce stade, on, on ne sait pas quel est le, le motif euh, de l'attaque. Je vous dis, euh, aucune piste n'est privilégiée, aucune n'est écartée. Donc, euh, je, je m'abstiendrai de commenter euh, la cible, euh, voilà. de quel type d'attaque s'agit-il, nous, nous ne savons pas encore. Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up both Greece and Turkey in prayer for easing of the suffering, their people's salvation and peace, alongside prayers of course for the United States ahead of the upcoming presidential elections tomorrow, the volatile situation in France and growing instability in Nigeria. In addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavuot Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.